You're one of the most successful comedians in the world. Mm -hmm. You've built your career on comedy. I'm curious what made you want to do a more serious role? Um, you know, just to show growth. Mm -hmm. I think um, with anything in life, you always want to progress. Having the opportunity to step outside my comfort zone of comedy and, you know, making a, a segue into what can be considered uh, the world of of dramatic acting, but done in a way to where my following can can be a part of the journey of me eventually going over there. This was a baby step, you know, this is a more dramatic role, but there's still some some comedy undertone to it. Very personable, grounded, authentic, but just only that I have the chops to do it. So the movie after this one will then be one that can be uh, another level past this one. It can be a little more serious, but my fan base would have seen this one and said, okay, wow, we know that he can do it. We believe that he's going over here. Oh, I'm curious to see how he is in this one too. So do you set 10 year goals, five year goals? 100%. You? Really? 100%, I think you have to with anything that you're doing because that's your that's your reward. Seeing that you can say things and watch those things become your reality is what puts you in a position to just keep going. Once you see, oh wow, I said I was gonna do this and I did it and now that I'm here, I'm not done. I'm going to set five new goals. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to achieve these and have the same conversation with myself in years to come. It's just always, it's playing a game with your own mental, I think. And that's why I love writing things down. That's why I love the vision board. That's why I love team meetings and, and conversation. There's, there's just nothing bad that can come out of them. It's only an upside, no, no pun intended with the movie. You know, I've been doing comedy and acting for years. But when I stepped on the set and I was with Brian Cranston and Nicole Kidman, regardless of my level of success or my star, I was a sponge. I was willing to soak up as much information as possible. I was listening, I was watching, uh, and, and pretty much taking away whatever I could from the moment of working with these two unbelievable people. You know, this is an amazing actress and an amazing actor. These are both they're at the top of their games. They're of the elite. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I'm in that company, I want to make sure that I put myself in the best position to be in the conversations that they're in in years to come. The path of your career is a really interesting one because you, you actually hit it big pretty early. You were in a Judd Apatow uh, TV show, which I think people aspire to. And then Hollywood just kind of stopped working for you. And you went on the road and started doing comedy and working your way back up and becoming big. And then when you came back to Hollywood, totally different Kevin Hart at that point. Uh, 100%. I did the shows, I, I worked with Judd. And while working, while working with Judd, I found that, you know, it's so, it's so amazing to create. But I was like, this is, it's not enough. Like, I'm not gonna be able to take care of myself. I'm not gonna be able to feed myself. So I made a decision to go and focus on stand-up comedy. I said, I know this is here but I can't just wait by the phone. I need to go put myself in a position where I can create, where I can be active. So I went and did stand-up comedy. I said, I want to focus on my stand-up comedy. Over the course of like three and a half, four years, I built my fan base up. My fan base was now selling out all shows. So now I don't have to do comedy clubs because now I can do little theaters. Now I've built all of this up by just being persistent and saying, idle time is an idle mind. So this whole time you're making these tours, is Hollywood calling you also? Are you starting to, and did you turn down work that would have brought you back? Well, it wasn't like I, I was turning down a crazy amount of work because it wasn't coming in. All right. So you were able to stay focused. I was, I was not only focused, I was just determined to make you realize what I am. Right. Because I know what I am. Nobody else knows what you are but you. You're your own competition. And when I realized what I was, I was like, there's no shot at me losing focus. There's no shot at me not finishing the job at hand. By the time I'm done, Hollywood is going to go, whoa, that guy's out there moving tickets. Who's this new star? Keep in mind, I've been around for years. Mm -hmm. They don't know and they don't have a real reason to. But now I'm gonna force your hand, I'm gonna make you aware. That's the beauty of stand-up comedy. 
And I've read something you've said before where you talk about not wanting to be work for hire. That along during this process, you realized that you were the product and you wanted to own the product. Mm -hmm. How did you come to that realization and what has that meant in terms of how you guide your career? You know, if you need me, you need me. If you don't, you don't. That's not, that's not good. You know, how am I going to really support those around me? How do I position myself to be so much more than that? How do I, how do I learn? What, what, like, where am I supposed to figure it out at? I went out and I used some examples. Will Packer was doing a bunch of movies and he was producing them. He approached me to produce a movie that he wanted to do. He's like, Kevin, this is something that's dear to my heart. I want to do it. I would love for you to be in it. You can star in it. I think it'll be great for you. All right. Dope. I want to do it. But then I watched him. I watched how he put stuff together. And doing that, I was like, yo, I can do that. I can do what he's doing. I already got the infrastructure. I already got the company set up. I got the office building. I can easily get the rest of the buildings. I can easily get space. Because I got money from stand-up. My money from stand-up can help me leverage and do the things that I want to do. Once I figured out how to get Heartbeat Productions running and off the ground, things started to click so much easier. Hmm. That was now, the turning point, starting yeah, your own company? Well, because now I'm producing for me. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is huge. It clicked. And when it clicked, it kept clicking. Because now I know how to add on to it. Now I know how to get more deals. Now I know how to not only develop, produce, I also know how to engage. What do you like as a, as a manager? Are you a hands-on guy? Do you hands build on. this? Really? Hands-on. Like daily meetings, monthly, you, you, you're, you're following, you're looking at the spreadsheets, you're seeing what's hands going on inside the business. You're hiring. Hands really? Do you like on. doing all that? I like it because right now it's it's my baby. Right. I'm watching it evolve because I'm putting the pieces to the puzzle in place. I'm hiring the right people. I'm I'm having the people that I hire feel comfortable enough to know that they're a part of something that's much, much bigger. Much, much bigger. You spent a lot of this week talking about the Oscars mm -hmm. controversy. You talk about um, helping out young comedians, mm -hmm. guiding the way for them. What lessons should they take out of what you've just been through? If you take a lesson from what I've been through, just pay attention. Hmm. Pay attention, man. Just one man's misfortune is another man's fortune. You know, uh, there's lesson learned in, in, in all of this for everyone. And it's just, it's, it's very easy for things to go away hard to achieve them it's very hard to get there it's easy for it to go away and you're living in a time where because it's so easy you have to just be careful just make sure that you're always handling yourself correctly you know not gonna be perfect nobody's perfect nobody's perfect but within your imperfections come perfection so give yourself time to grow and understand the state of the world today. It's different. It's different. But also be true to you. That's another thing that I would say, you know, be true to you. Don't, don't let other people dictate who you are and what you should be. I think we're all smart enough to know right from wrong and we're all smart enough to fix whatever the wrong is to make it a right. In doing so, do it while staying true to you. It's a hard line to walk, right? You have to it's be a, true to a, yourself, but also it's think very, about it. It's a very thin line hmm. because you can, easily, you can easily get off balance. Right. But as long as you're conscious and aware of it, you know, you'll, you'll be okay. And that's what, that's, that's what I'll say. You know, just, just be aware, man, be aware. But I, I will say that it only gets uh, it only gets tougher as you get bigger. Right. But there is an approach to still trying to be edgy. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a comedian. If you're a comedian, you're supposed to be able to say the things that other people think, but they won't say. 
and you doing that, you now have to just make sure you're doing that. You're doing it correctly. Make sure that there's a, a high level of professionalism. And if you are a comic that chooses to go down that insensitive road, just understand that there's going to be backlash for it and be prepared for that. If that's what you want and that's who you want to be, then by all means do it. I'm not here to change you. Do it. Not here to change it all, but just be smart in your approach to it. And I would say that I think that's the, the dopest thing about my change is that I've, I've done that. And that's why I decided just to be done with the situation because the change came in the last 10 years that act as proof of somebody that got it, understood it, and adjusted and adapted to the times of today. So my challenge to myself for 19 is to really put Heartbeat Productions in a position to where we are now not only partnering with other big studios like we are now, but to where we are in production on at least 10 to 15 things between film and TV in 2019 that are self-developed from the inside. That's the pressure that I put on myself Next year, and my team. That's great. Okay. All right. Well, Kevin, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you so much. That's dude. terrific.